Welcome to Ground Control. It is time to take our Dancing Wings Hobby Pit 450 millimeter wingspan 3D biplane out for its maiden launch. I did a couple more things um, since the second review video where we finished up the build. I have opted to go without the landing gear because in the area where I have to land, it's so rough. I I think that the, I would probably damage or rip off the landing gear out there. So I'm just going to belly land it. I did opt for the um, HQ T-mount 5030 prop um, for the reasons I specified in the show notes in review part two. There was just too much vibration. The, the stock prop with that little tiny hub for the uh, prop saver. Uh, the prop just wouldn't stay straight on the mount and it created a lot of vibration so I ran it up with this prop and it's uber smooth now so so this is the prop I'm going to go with but the two things that I did to the plane since the build uh, since the review video of the build part two where I finished it up was I went ahead and took some more of my foam cure and I squeegeed it in on top of all these little tabs where the struts fit on the wing, on the top and on the bottom wing, just to make sure there was no voids in the glue. Um, so I, I'm pretty confident that that's all very rigid. The uh, two millimeter carbon section that I put in the front to, to make the center strut really rigid has worked out great. That, that wing is not gonna move back and forth now on the top. So it's, it's plenty rigid enough. The all-up weight on the plane with my lightest weight, 2S, 300 milliamp hour LiPo was 67 grams. I don't know how much thrust this 1106 motor and this 5030 prop are going to provide on a 2S. I know on my, on my converted Flybear SU-35, which has an 1104 motor on it, but it's a 6000 kV, uh, not a 3800 kV, which is what this motor is. Spinning a 3020 prop produces 112 grams of thrust. I'm hoping that this 1106 with a 5030 on a 2S will produce at least 110 grams of thrust. If it does, that will give me a, give me a little over a 1.6 to 1 thrust to weight ratio. So if I can get that type of thrust to weight ratio, it should be a fairly aerobatic little plane. I did take it out for some glide test and, and with, without the prop on, mounted on the motor. So that decreases the nose weight by 2.5 grams. So I took it out with, with my lightest weight battery and I chucked it out in the backyard and according to where their specified CG is, which is right at the leading edge of the bottom wing. So I took a plastic square and I put it on the flip the plane upside down and put the square up here right up against the leading edge of the bottom wing and then took a sharpie and put two black dots on either side of the wing so I know exactly where to put my fingers to test the CG on it. The CG was tail heavy. Of course, almost, you know, I think that the 3D planes, the CG is designed to have it tail heavy. That makes it a lot easier to do things like hover them. So that's not unusual. I just didn't want it to be too tail heavy. So when I took it out and chucked it two or three times just to check the glide, it would come up, it would nose up and it would stall and it would come down and, and hit and, and impact the grass at about, I don't know, about a 20 degree angle. So it was hitting pretty hard out there when I did the glide test. Putting the prop on it is going to increase the nose weight by 2.5 grams. So if I put my fingers on here now where the specified CG is, well, I don't have the battery in it, but um, it's just slightly tail heavy, um, and that's what I'm going to go with. I, if I have to while I'm out there when I launch it, if it's too tail heavy, then I'll put some additional weight on the nose um, until I can get back and adjust my slot for the battery. If I need to, I'll cut that slot out so I can move the battery further forward so I don't have to have the nose weight. But um, I, it didn't seem to me like it was going to be too tail heavy for a 3D plane. But we'll find out when I take it out there and launch it. So 
Um, when we get back, if the maiden flight plus one goes well, and when we get back, I will give you some recommendations on what I would do if I was building this plane again. Um, a couple of things that I would add to it. Uh, one of my concerns right now is with the deflection on the ailerons. It seems to have a lot of flex in the control surfaces on the aileron. Now the elevator has some carbon reinforcement in it and the rudder I don't think needs any carbon reinforcement. I think that's going to be fine. But when I you know, moved the stick full deflection on the ailerons, it looked to me like I was getting very little movement at the end of the aileron uh, on the top and on the bottom because it's flexing. So I'll have, we'll have to take it out and maiden it and see what kind of roll rate we have. But if I was a betting man, I would bet that when I come back, I'm going to have to put some carbon reinforcement in those ailerons. We'll see. Uh, maybe it doesn't have to move that much since you've got, you know, four aileron control surfaces on the biplane instead of just two on a mono wing plane. I don't know because I've never flown a biplane before. So, but if we take it out, and right now I've got my dual rate at 125% on the aileron because I just didn't think I was getting enough deflection. So um, if, that, if that turns out to be the case, then I will add some carbon reinforcement. We'll take it out and test it again. But anyway, let's go out and maiden, do the maiden launch on this. If that's successful, then we'll put it in the air again. We'll do a maiden plus one. And then when we come back, I'll go over the things that I would do differently. Okay, I'm out here with the Dancing Wings Hobby Pits 450. Wind is 4 to 5 this morning. Alright, so maiden launch. Get her pointed into the wind. Let's see what we've got. That wasn't good. Seems like I'm getting a lot of torque roll. All right. Let's put in some right aileron. I'll try it again. I'll launch that at 60% throttle. There we go. Nope. It was as I feared. I don't have any aileron authority at all. All right, so I put even more right aileron in it. Let's try it one more time where I have to make some adjustments. Nope. No aileron authority at all. <laughs> That's what I was afraid of. Yeah, there's just too way too much flexing on the ailerons. I'm not sure why they, you know, because there's look how large the ailerons are. I mean, they go almost the full span of the wing on the bottom wing and. Well, almost a full span on the top wing, too. So, why they didn't include carbon reinforcement on the ailerons, I do not know. But, um, that's where I am. Let me see if I put... Let me see if I put a little right trim into the... Into the rudder. Let's see what that does. But definitely not a warm, fuzzy feeling here. Alright, here we go. Think it's tail heavy? A little tail heavy, maybe? All right, let's set it down. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna add some weight to the nose, and then launch it again and see what we have. 
All right, so I'm going to put some nose weight on it, and then we'll launch it again. Okay, um, take three, I think. Now, since it was so darn tail heavy, I'm actually starting off with a nickel attached to the front of the plane. So we'll see what that does. All right, launching. Certainly better, but man, I have, I still have no aileron authority at all. Ah, uh, did you see that? I had to put in um, rudder, to trying to get it to turn right. It just wanted to circle and just went into a spiral. So... Let's see if there's any damage. Well, oh, my nickel came off. <laughs> Other than that, let's see. Yeah, other than that, it looks like we're completely intact. I've got maximum right trim in the rudder. Let's try it one more time. Here we go. Nope, I still have no aileron authority at all. All right, that's all I needed to see. Set it down. There we go. Okay, so that didn't go very well. And, you know, there was nothing in the manual about motor angle. And the mount for the motor was designed for the motor to go straight in without an angle. Now, on my tractor planes, I've always put in right angle on the motor and a lot of times down angle to counteract prop torque. But I never flown a biplane before, so I thought, well, maybe with the upper and the lower wing, there's enough wing area that with a 5 inch prop you don't need um, to worry about motor angle because it won't produce much in the way of torque roll. Well, that was a wrong assumption but it definitely needs the right angle in the motor and I think that is the majority of the problem with the plane out there today and I ended up putting five battery packs to it and I got it to the point where I could get it to turn right as well as left and, and I was flying to, through an entire battery pack but it wasn't a lot of fun because I had to put so much rudder trim into it that when I turned left it would be a, it would be a flat pivot and then when I turned right, it would have so much rudder in it that it would snap around and want to nose down on me. So it wasn't much fun, but I wanted to test it as much as I could to figure out exactly what I needed to do. So I'm convinced that the vast majority of the problem that I'm having out there with this plane is all due to motor torque. It kind of reminds me of the J3 Cub when I took the um, gyro receiver out of it and put a manual receiver in it, I didn't realize how tail heavy that plane was and how much um, torque roll it had until I got it into manual mode. So this plane reminds me a lot of that. And we ended up getting that plane flying pretty darn well. So I think that once I, <coughs> I think that once I take care of the motor angle, the torque issue on the motor, so that it flies nice and level and you know it's not pivoting and it's not banking and I have plenty of either on to the left and to the right. Um, I was looking at the control surfaces. Now where the control horns are located on the upper wing, they are in a more center location on the upper ailerons. So I don't think I'm going to get the flexing out of the upper ailerons like I'm getting out of the lower ones. But uh, on the lower ones, because the control horns are all the way over here on the edge of the aileron, and the aileron comes all the way to the end of the wing, the kit should have had, in my opinion, some carbon rod to reinforce the ailerons. There was just no way, and you know, I think I mentioned that before, I, before this video, before I took it out, um, 
was that I was really concerned about the flexing on the ailerons. So, so I'm going to do two things and I'm going to take it back out and test it again. And once I get it all lined out, then I'll produce another video. I know I said I was going to tell you what I would do if I was building it differently. I'm going to wait to give you that information until I get it flying just perfectly. And then I'll show you the end result of the modifications that I made to the plane to get it that way, assuming I don't tear it up before I get it to that point. Um, and then I will give you all the information on the things that, that I would do differently if I was building it again, so that when you go out and launch it, it flies extremely well right off the bat, you know, having to go back and adjust anything. So anyway, that's where we are with this plane. I think, from what I've seen today, it's not going to take a whole lot of effort to correct these two issues. And I think when I take it back out again, it's going to be flying the way I want it to fly. And it seems to have sufficient power with this little 1106 motor spinning this 5x3 prop. So I will get those modifications done and get it back in the air and test it again. So stay tuned. We will eventually end up with a very fine flying 3D biplane. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the air.